Well, I'm here with Terrell Collier of Collier's Arbor Care. And Terrell, there's a couple of things that are really happening that, that we wanted to mention with trees this year. One of them being this bronze birch borer. Now, we're right here in Wilsonville, right on a highway, so there's a lot of background noise, but you found some right here. Yes, we have a number of uh, birches that are growing right here, and you can see all the, that they're dying from the bronze birch borer. And so this problem is so prevalent uh, that uh, almost every day I go out, I diagnose a birch that's dying from this particular insect. And it really, it does affect the whole family, not just a couple of the varieties of the birch. That's correct. Uh, most birches, uh, I would, uh, most species are susceptible to this. So the common European birch and the, also the, the uh, Himalayan birch, very susceptible to the bronze birch borer. The only tree that's resistant, the only birch, is the uh, river birch. Now, just resistant, doesn't mean it can't get them, but it'll be less likely to if they're around. Yes. Now, how, how do I know? What do I look for? Well, first of all, you look up into the crown of the tree and look for dying branches. And another thing that you can look for is that if you can, uh, if you look on the branches, and this bore is very tiny, by the way, and the larvae are probably less than about a half an inch long, and it's the larvae burrowing underneath the bark that's killing the tree. And there are literally tens of thousands of them in a tree killing it. But what you want to look for is this tiny little hole. It's D-shaped. It's about the size of a BB. And that is very typical of this certain type of bore. And if you're not aware, you would look at that and just think it's part of the tree. You really have to get up and inspect you, it. You have to know what this looks like. But a D-shaped uh, exit hole is very typical of what we call flat-headed wood boring beetles. And then once, let's say we discover that, we see that, what do we do then? Well, um, the best thing is prevention. Once you see, uh, if your tree is showing about, a, let's say, a third of the crown is dying back, it's almost too late at that point. Yeah. So you have to catch it very early or preferably uh, even before they show any symptoms. So we actually have good controls for this particular insect by applying a systemic material as a soil drench around the base of the tree. And then the tree takes it up through the sap stream and we can give them protection. Well, you know, if, if this is something that you think you have, you should give them a call and, and see if it might be going on in your yard. They'll come out and take a look for you. But there's also another thing that we're going to be discussing about squirrel damage. So let's take a walk over there and find some of that, shall we? All right. Thank you. Now, Terrell, we are in a place where we can get a, a clear example of a bunch of brown limbs high in the trees. I think all of us have seen this, whether driving down I-5 or in neighborhoods. And this is squirrel damage. Yes, it is. And uh, what we have here with these power lines, we have a squirrel freeway. It is, isn't it? <laughs> so they kind of use that for transportation. But they actually do a lot of damage. And so we have predominantly two species of trees that suffer the most squirrel damage. And that's our native uh, big leaf maple mm -hmm. and also our native Oregon white oak. So basically what the squirrels do is they chew on the branch to, to eat the cambium, but uh -huh. also maybe because, you know, their teeth are always growing, they just, they're, they're you know, they're a rodent, they yeah. chew. Yeah. So they girdle the branch, and then from that point outward, the branch dies. Yeah, so it can't, what else can it do? <laughs> right, so then you usually see about mid-July, uh, mid you see these branches dying back like we have uh, up here. So, Terrell, is there a specific squirrel that does this, or is it pretty much all squirrels? Well, it, it presumably all squirrels, but what we have here um, is the, it's a non-native species, so an invasive species of squirrel, if you will. And mm. so we have the eastern fox squirrel. And they're the ones that are almost kind of reddish yeah. looking. And they're actually, um, they're pushing our native squirrels out of, their, out of their native habitat and they're replacing them. And they're the ones that seem to do the most damage. The most damage, which would make sense because they're, they're a new species in this area relatively. Well, you know, if you see this happening in your neighborhood or on your own trees, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to the uh, Collier Arbor Care website and have them come out and help you out or uh, find out some other way to take care of the squirrel damage in your yard. Thank you so much, Daryl. Thank you very much, William.